Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Austin Brown. I'm a 2D lead over at PSYOP. Uh, we're a commercial house. We mostly focus on character animation, uh, live action VFX as well. Um, I mostly work on all CG stuff. We do a lot of uh, Gregor Wireless commercials, and our biggest client, or one of our biggest clients, is a company called Supercell. Um, they do like Clash Royale, Clash Clans, stuff like that. And they're coming out with this game, Brawl Stars, and wanted us to do a, uh, a one minute long promo video for them. Um, so part of this process, we had to like kind of match their game asset look. Um, their game assets were all you know, tune shaded. And uh, we also wanted to incorporate a bunch of 2D, hand-drawn, like cell animated effects into it. Um, a variety of techniques. Uh, some of the challenges we have at PSYOP is uh, we work super lean, so um, our comp team was basically just me for three months, um, which is an exceptionally long time for uh, a project for me. Usually I'm on a project for three or four weeks. Um, I had one other compositor with me for about four weeks at the very end. Uh, we had to put out a ton of stuff, just a bunch of super high-res stills. We had to do a bunch of look dev, all sorts of stuff. Um, we were in Arnold house. Uh, Arnold at the time has no tune shading. They wanted a super cartoony look, uh, a lot of squash and stretch, um, a lot of you know, integrating with the 2D effects, stuff like that. And so uh, we knew from the beginning that we we're gonna have to make a lot of this happen in comp, not through lighting. Um, and then figure out how to in integrate all the 2D effects and make it look fun and cool. Um, Uh, so yeah, I did look dev for about eight characters. Um, the whole spot was about a minute long, 24 shots, uh, 12, 12K promo stills, a bunch of 4K promo stills, um, just like a whole ton of stuff. So kind of the, the goal of the game was to make everything as efficient as possible so that way we could iterate with the client and figure out a look they want. Um, and you know, I was putting out a, you know, a minute of comp about twice a week. Uh, we also had um, a pretty spread out uh, team. Um, we were doing CG and animation stuff here in LA, compositing LA. Uh, directors um, was from this company called Golden Wolf. They did all the 2D effects. They also directed the spot. They were in London. Uh, Supercell is in Helsinki, and their ad agency, Barton, is in San Francisco. So um, efficiency, um, it's, it's a pretty normal thing, I think, for like some of the more film people, but for us in the commercial aspect, it's, uh, it was tough, it's a challenge. Um, so yeah, we just, you know, we took, unfortunately we had a big server move this weekend, so I wasn't able to grab a whole lot of breakdowns, so I'm, I apologize. Uh, so we did a bunch of turntables for them. Um, they really wanted this cartoony look. We did, started doing some weird stuff, like we, multiply the lighting by the diffuse and then add diffuse back into it to try and like you know, pump saturation up into it. There were really like no AOVs that were kind of left untouched in the rebuild. We, we kind of did something with everything to try and really push what they wanted. Um, they really wanted this cartoony rim on the side, which we achieved through a variety of ways. Uh, sometimes a directional blur, sometimes it was normals, uh, sometimes it was stuff from CG that we would grade in certain ways. Um, and then in this looked at process, I got to make just like a ton of gizmos. Uh, so I'm not sure if, I've been at SIOP for a long time, so we use cryptomats for everything. Does everyone know what cryptomats are? Okay, cool, great. Uh, so we built this system to, um, basically we would parse the crypto asset manifest list and get a list of everything that was in the lair and with that, we could just add in gizmos for base, basically whatever character might need a gizmo. So I color coded them to make them easy to read. Um, and then they would just pull in automatically and as we would make changes down the line, update the gizmo, open the shot, re-render, and hopefully it all worked out. Um, obviously I'm on, I'm not the TD side, that was the previous session. Uh, so all the Python I know is kind of uh, recognized by this. Uh, it goes in one ear, out the other, but it's super useful. Um, very funny Instagram account, highly recommend you follow them. It's my only meme of the talk. Uh, so yeah, so we had these giant 12K stills, super, takes a super long time to load nuke, everything was very slow. So just the more we could make the process efficient, 
the more we could get notes, the more we could make everything better for our clients. Um, Spike is my favorite, he's the cactus. Um, so I said I just made a lot of gizmos. If I was doing it in 2019, I would not be using gizmos. Uh, gizmos are great for tools, they're great for things that you create and then give to other people and then they make stuff. I don't think they're great in the creative process. Um, if I was doing it now, I'd use live groups. I like live groups a lot uh, because, especially because you can like iterate and then go back if something doesn't work. You have version numbers attached to stuff. Gizmos, I always felt like I didn't know what was updating all the time. And so don't use gizmos, don't listen to me, use live groups. Um, so part of this efficiency process is just, uh, was making sure everything was super templated out. So that way, whenever my teammate, my colleague came on, um, she could just hop into any shot she wanted to and get stuff done. So like the most basic shots, pretty simple uh, to like more and more 2D layers keep getting added to like just way too many 2D layers. And just being able to, uh, but they all have the same sort of structure of just like this like little Y pattern. So that way we, whoever comes into the shot can jump in there and just do stuff. Um, and another, another problem we came up with was Arnold 5 was their transition to, and I'm not 3D so I could be getting this wrong, uh, was their transition from a display referred renderer to a scene referred renderer. And all of the 2D effects we were getting were uh, you know, done in Flash and they're all basically sRGB. And so we had to kind of creatively problem solve like how do we put all that sRGB data into our scene referred stuff. Uh, it still hurts my head, I don't wanna think about it. Uh, but you know, sometimes we'd use reverse sluts, sometimes we would just take the alpha from those files and apply them to constants. Um, sometimes we would uh, uh, reverse sluts, I say reverse sluts, just grade them. Um, so you know, basically, basically straight out of 3D, kind of looks like this with just like a tone map applied. Um, there are very few assets we like didn't touch in the scene. Um, totally changed the way the ground looks. The, the 2D was all animated using play blasts, so all the colors of the 2D were pretty much wrong most of the time, so we had to go in and try and match stuff out a lot. Um, we would take stuff like, uh, take like the depth pass and apply it to like a diffuse color to add into the, into the set scene, so that way there's less texture the further away from camera you got. So we try and just like simplify everything, so the closer you get to camera, uh, the more, the more texture there is and the further away there is, the less you pay attention to it. And then, you know, usual stuff like glows and fog and haze and stuff, the usual comp stuff. Um, the shots are pretty boring without the 2D effects. They look really weird. And then we basically didn't get complete effects until the very end of the project because the 2D process is very, you know, hand involved. And so uh, another interesting fun stuff on this one was that um, our pipeline at the time had a bug where it wouldn't render PNGs in the farm. Uh, and so we basically got all of these assets as uh, uncompressed TIFF files. So they were super fast, let me tell you. Um, a lot of crops, a lot of making sure things were turned off and on. Um, just again, to try and keep things as efficiently possible so I can work through every shot uh, and get all the notes we have. Um, so yeah, this is our, probably our craziest shot, big 360, every character in it. Um, Lots going on. That was the big ugly comp earlier that said why. Um, you know, just like lots of key mixes and stencils and just, you know, basic comp work uh, to try and to get this stuff done that we wanted to do. And um, so here's some examples of maybe how we affected some of the 2D stuff. Some of it's pretty simple. Came in as like a couple different layers, auto cross, filter road, stuff like that. Sometimes, you know, the way they animated it wouldn't always fit in the world, so we'd have to stabilize it, put it on a card, retrack it in, and figure out like where it exists in 3D space. Trying to figure out where 2D stuff exists in 3D space can kind of hurt your brain sometimes. Um, but I think it all worked out pretty well. Um, and then sometimes, the, instead of just being an explosion or a dust hit, we'd actually you know, have like these big glass clouds that affect, affected other stuff in there, made it look more voluminous than just the 2D effect actually was. Um, and then some super simple breakdowns of, of that one big shot. Um, so yeah, this is like, I'll go back, I'll go back. Straight out renderer, all the gizmos applied, basic 2D stuff, basic comp, 
and a little bit of gray that you can't tell over here. Um, yeah, in the end, uh, the whole point of this is efficiency iteration. I, I know it doesn't seem like there was that big of a difference between the before and afters, but that was a very long process of getting there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just being able to work with our team and, and make sure that everything looks cool and everyone's happy. Uh, and that's it for me. Thank you.